Hello, I'm Casper. I'm director of e-residency. Uh, I'm one of those guys who actually sometimes download torrents and watch Netflix if possible, so I hope you don't hate me. Uh, no. Uh, I'm going through the journey of e-residency and uh, later I'll try to give examples together with you uh, to actually try to think of ways how internet can help this industry, not to kill this industry. And perhaps we find some, uh, some ways how e-residents can do that. So, my power speech. Uh, 15, minute, uh, 15 um, minutes of this, I guess. 10 million Estonians were proposed by our CIO, Tavi Kotska, uh, one year ago. Uh, so, to increase our nation, because we have only 1 million and uh, we need to increase our nation size, uh, our economic size. Uh, the idea was very interesting, and I'll go through the journey of this. Uh, by 1st of September, um, they won this scholarship to actually make this happen. I started to run this project, uh, and uh, we thought to run this as a startup. Let's do it the first, like, real government startup. Uh, now, just recently, BBC overdid this as a coolest government startup in the world. So you can see the coolest government startup. What do you do in a startup if you don't know what's happening? You do some launch page, you know, you do some launch page where you like try to get subscribers, explain the stuff. We got, after published the e-residency concept, we got over uh, 4,000 early subscribers who wanted to become Estonian e-residents. And you may ask, like, what is e-residents in the first place? So at the moment, we didn't know either, <laughs> and they didn't know. But the concept of e-residency was so fasci fascinating that basically people just wanted to become Estonians. <laughs> so, and uh, that was very interesting, and we went further. And further, and 1st of November, our, our uh, parliament accepted the legislation to actually make it happen. So the e-resident of Estonia is a person who has Estonian digital identity card. It exactly looks like an Estonian card, to be honest, but it doesn't have a picture on it. So it's basically this kind of chip where you can enter it to your computer. <laughs> and, it's, and basically you can uh, access all the digital world that Estonia has to offer. So... We didn't know exactly what the digital world is, what e-residents want to access. And we went still further. Uh, we had first e-residency launch on 1st of December last year. Uh, it was a huge event. The British journalist Edward Lucas uh, signed first digital document as an Estonian e-resident. And after that, we had a huge P PR campaign in the uh, in US when we had like Prime Minister delegation visit there. Everywhere I was in the U.S., people were speaking about the Estonian e residency and how some of them told how there is a new country emerged in the EU. Others told how you can actually travel to the EU without visa. And all that crazy stuff, most of them were wrong. But at that point of time, we realized that this is something amazing. This can be something amazing. Uh, something more than just one scholarship guy kind of running this. So we got the mandate from Prime Minister to actually form the team and to start running and this like a proper, proper government startup. So by 1st of January we had a team and 1st of April a uh, team of seven members together. Um, and uh, our first event was uh, in mid-May where we launched application form. So if you now want to become Estonian e-resident, you go to e-resident.gov.e, remember that site and go to that site. Uh, apply e-residents, Estonia is then doing background check of you, if everything is alright about you. You don't have any criminal records or money laundering records. Uh, you can go and pick up the card on the destinations there, from Tokyo to New York. You're going to embassy, giving fingerprints, and you get the card. So, all in all, I'll try to give you an example of what e-residencies want to do, like what, why we are doing and who are e-residents. So far, we have over 6,000 e-residents. Uh, our yearly goal was 2,000, so we are three times over it and we have from 120 different countries. And the main reasons why people come as e-residents are to run location-independent business. And this is important to understand. So there are mainly people from, sometimes we can call them in India, in Malaysia, Indonesia, people who are really struggle running companies online. They cannot sell their stuff, they don't have PayPal, Stripe, those kind of things. They don't have bank accounts, they are sometimes not trusted. And uh, it's a huge hassle to administrate those companies. Huge paperwork also. So they come as an e-resident, they establish company, bank account, get PayPal or Stripe, 
and the digital sign uh, signing. And this gives them opportunity to run location-independent business. And this is huge for them, because they today cannot run business, now they become somehow e-Estonians and they run their business through Estonia. Uh, this is the most amazing graph to understand. These are uh, companies established by e-residents through last six month time. If you know private sector, if you, let's take your favorite company, perhaps Netflix. If Netflix starts to grow, it grows exponentially. What means exponential growth is that eventually you end up with billion users, not any more million. Basically, you get the internet, and the internet is huge. This is a first government startup, and imagine now one government growing exponentially. It doesn't really matter then how many customers you have, how many citizens you have. It matters how many end users you get eventually. And if you have a product, we can sell our government or any other government can actually start growing exponentially. And this is huge. And what they're doing against for this is not tax money. Uh, usually you pay taxes wherever your activity is based. That those companies are off, uh, paying for Estonian service providers. They need bank accounts, they need a physical address, they need legal advice, tax advice. So Estonia as a whole gets new money into the country. Hence, we get more taxes from our own companies. So this is the concept. We are very like early stage. There are like many, many laws which we need to change. For example, to get bank account, to get it online way. After five months, you can do that, all that. Uh, but we can see that the validation is there. Uh, people want to become e-Estonians. And, uh, and this is amazing. And now we can discuss uh, with Q&A also, because I'm not expert in film industry at all. Like, uh, do we see any connections in film industry? You mentioned digital single market. Can it somehow relate to that? And we can have other questions also. I'll wait 10 seconds, then it's the first question. Yes. Yes, question. Uh, one is there also. Oh, really? So this 10% sometimes visit Estonia, for example, if you're a university scholar or if you're doing film industry stuff, sometimes you need to visit Estonia and then your life here is easier. Uh, you can sign uh, your contracts before coming here, you can uh, access our food stores or libraries using that card sometimes. And the basically digital signing is the 10% reasons then that sometimes if you have some business connections or personal connections, uh, you can you can make the signing through digital signing. You can just have a better life here while you're in Estonia. But you're correct that uh, it doesn't give you rights to travel at all at the moment. Yes, yes, we have questions. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, which? Your, your third one then, please. So uh, Estonia will be launching a cash rebate system soon, and we hope that there will be many producers coming in. So you know, will you be ready to start giving out the uh, the cards to producers as well? You know, who might want to do a company to run the production here? Uh, true, everybody can apply e-residency. What was your question? Everybody can apply. Yeah, and uh, and the thing is actually to think. I just half an hour ago discussed with some of you guys, and those issues came out. Do you see these challenges and do you see e-residency can be a solution for them? For example, IP management. Uh, if you have some uh, IP thing uh, in some countries, you need to have like many shareholders there. Perhaps it's, I have heard lots of paperwork again. Perhaps digital signing can be helpful there. Uh, film distribution, lots of uh, paperwork, lots of hassle sometimes. DHL. 
recognizes those. Some examples for you to think. Third question. Yeah, and that's a very good point, you know. This is like first real, perhaps, example nation without borders, which eventually can emerge, you know. And the questions arise, should we give, like, way how they can vote on some parliament decisions even? Like, if you have one million Estonians and ten million of them, how do we, like, create this culture? Uh, what rights do they have? What obligations do they have? And that's very interesting. And uh, we are, like, just the beginning of there, and we try to open these discussions up. So we don't have solutions at the moment. So imagine you have uh, ten billion dollars a year of income. Imagine taking five percent of that money and financing content for the citizens of the EU. You like that? True. <laughs> I can teach the design if you want. <laughs> so all right. Thanks. Do you have any residents here? Raise your hands. One. Two. Two e residents. Good. Ah, you can pick it up in Brussels, yeah. in Thailand. So, thank you so much, Kasper. Thank you.